Hello everybody and welcome to another episode. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to fix any problems on your Volvo car, doesn't matter which year or model it is, which has anything to do with the exhaust gas pressure sensor or with the error code P0471 or P047100. So the main problem which is giving you this error code will be this metal pipe which is connected to the exhaust manifold and which has to it attached another sensor and this sensor is reading the exhaust gas pressure which are coming out from the engine. And for example, if the pipe is blocked or probably the sensor is blocked or the sensor is not working how it should work, it will give you the error code on the dashboard P0471 or P047100 depending on which diagnostic tool you are using. So to fix this problem completely from the car, my recommendation is to replace the pipe and also the sensor completely with a new one and in this way the problem will go away very easy and you don't have to uh, get dirt on your hands. But if you for example don't want to replace the parts or if you for example don't have the money to replace the parts, I recommend all to start removing the pipe completely out from the engine. You'll have to remove the bigger screw which are securing it mounted to the exhaust manifold and after that you have to remove the little screw which are securing it mounted on the right side using an 8mm socket. After you remove the pipe, you'll have to disconnect the sensor from the pipe, you'll have to remove them apart and after that you'll have to clean the sensor and the pipe very good. So to clean the metal pipe and also the sensor from this car, I recommend all to take a metal wire line and also some universal degreaser and if you have to, you can also use a lot of heat. So the things which I did was to spray a lot of universal degreaser inside and outside the pipe and after that the dirt and the grime was getting softer and softer and then I was able to push the metal wire line all the way through the pipe and also I used a lot of heat because the heat will also unclog the pipe, it will also make the dirt and the grime from inside it to burn and in this way it will come out a little bit easier. So in my case I spent over 30 minutes to clean this metal pipe because it was completely stuck from the inside, it was completely clogged and the problem with this car was this metal pipe. To clean the sensor from this pipe, you'll have to take some universal degreaser, you'll have to spray it all over the sensor and after that you'll have to use a wire brush and clean it very good. Then you'll have to use some brake cleaner to dry it and clean it completely and only then you can mount it back over the pipe. So as you can see right here, I'm using some comprimated air to clean the pipe from the interior and some dirt is coming out but it's not completely cleaned yet. I'm going to clean it one more time, I'm going to use some universal degreaser again and also the metal wire line and also the heat and I will come back to show you all how the dirt is coming out from the pipe when I'm using some comprimated air. So as you can see, right now all the dirt and the grime is coming out, a lot of sparks are coming out from inside the pipe because I was hitting the pipe very good from the exterior and into the interior it destroyed all the dirt and the grime and in this way the pipe was unclogged. Right here for example I also use some uh, water because I want to clean the interior of the pipe very good. So if for example I'm putting the water right here on this corner to push it through the pipe the water is coming out from the pipe very clean and in a very good shape. So as you can see, right now the pipe is completely clean from this car and the only thing which I have to do next is to install them back on the vehicle. Right here I have the pipe and also the sensor cleaned and in a very good condition and the only thing which I have to do next is to mount them back on the car. And if for example you do all of these things and you still have the error on the dashboard, I recommend you to replace the sensor completely and the pipe completely with a new one and only then the problem will go away on your car. In my case, for example, it's been over one week since I cleaned the sensor and installed them back on the car and the car has no errors, the car is behaving perfectly, I have nothing on the dashboard and also nothing on the diagnostic tool. So in my case, for example, I fixed this problem by removing this pipe, by cleaning the pipe and also cleaning the sensor. And if you are doing this thing and the problem will be still there on your car, I recommend you to replace the sensor and the pipe with a new one and then the problem will go away by itself. So right here, as you can see, this is the original code, this is the code from this part with the original sensor from this car, and if you for example have to replace it, just type this code and you'll find the sensor for your car. So the correct position from this pipe, in my case and on this car, is mounted right here. You'll have to put it underneath all of these cables from the oxygen sensor and from the temperature sensor. You'll have to put it underneath them and then you'll have to secure it on the right side and also on the left side to the exhaust manifold and that's it.
All right, everybody, I installed everything back together on the car and the car is ready to go on the road. But also in my case, for example, I like to remove all the oxygen sensors and also the temperature sensor from this car because I like to clean them because they have never been cleaned. And in this way, probably I will prevent something to happen with them in the future. Probably I will make them last a little bit longer than usual. So this temperature sensor is mounted over the DPF filter and the location of it is right here at the top of the DPF filter on the right side. You have to use a special tool to remove it and if you don't have a special tool you can also use a normal ratchet and probably you will be able to remove it but depending from car to car the space will be a little bit smaller or bigger and this you have to figure out by yourself on this car for example it's a little bit easier to work on it because the car is bigger and the parts are a little bit smaller and you have a lot of access to remove them right here this is an oxygen sensor this is mounted right here before the dpf filter and if you want to know exactly, you'll have, I think, five or six uh, oxygen sensors mounted on this exhaust on this special car. So this is a 2-liter engine from this Volvo XC40 from the year 2020 with the badge D3 on it, something like that. So if you want to remove all the oxygen sensors or clean them, you'll have two of them right here behind the engine and you'll have three of them underneath the catalytic converter underneath the vehicle. Alright everybody, right here I have the temperature sensor and the oxygen sensor cleaned and ready to go back on the vehicle. This is the condition for this sensor and uh, on this car for example I had no errors with none of these sensors but I like to clean them to prevent anything to happen in the future. Okay everybody, so I installed the temperature sensor and the oxygen sensor back on the vehicle and now I removed the other oxygen sensor which is mounted right in the middle of the DPF filter and this is the condition of it. I will also clean it very good and I will install it back on the vehicle. Right here, the sensor is perfectly cleaned and ready to go back on the vehicle. I will not show you all the sensors, how to clean them and how to remove them, but you'll have to follow the assassin technique and steps on your car if you want to maintain your car in a very good condition. So for example, the location of this one, it's right here in the middle of the DPF filter. I hope you all are able to see exactly. This is a little hole on which you'll have to tighten it back on the DPF filter. And if you want to remove all of these sensors, you have to use a special tool like this one, but if you don't have it, don't worry about it. So with all of these things being said, this is how to fix the error code P0471 or P047100 from any Volvo car. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video and found it informative, please leave a like and a comment down below. See you next time.